Oxford is a good town for writers because uh, there have been enough, there's, there's been a precedent for writers living in this town and functioning as a writer. Um, so that when someone says uh, so-and-so is a writer or I say I'm a writer, it's fully accepted that it's a, 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 a worthwhile member of society and there's an understanding uh, that, that the country needs writers. Whereas other parts of the country, especially a small town, uh, being a writer is an anomaly and uh, quite unusual. So I published like two chapbooks of flash fiction before Big World came out. And yeah, for the most part, the only people publishing short story collections, unless you're, you know, super famous, George Saunders type, you, you're, you're going to be working with small presses or mid-sized presses. In that time, I discovered Barry Hanna and Tom Franklin and Jack Pendarvis and Beth Ann Fennelly and all these other writers who were in Oxford, so I kind of knew I wanted to, to be in Oxford. So. There's a, a strong, active, smart mind behind the prose. There's a, a attention paid to the quality of prose. There's an, a, a, an aesthetic sense that goes on in there. Uh, both books actually, uh, have, there's, a, there's a sense of morality that's in there. It may be a private morality, it may not be the one that, uh, that other people would like to think that we all should have and share. One time I was at Square Books with a couple of other like indie lit kid writers. I have no better way to describe it, but I think it was like 2010 maybe, and John Grisham was in the back at Square Books just signing his stock, and Richard Howarth, the owner, he was like, hey, do you want to read with these nobodies? And he agreed to. Oh, really? So he read, <laughs> yeah, so he read with us. Um, so it was like me and my two friends, and then John Grisham read last, <laughs> and then took pictures with all of us. And that was like one of the first times I'd come to Oxford and I thought, I was telling people, I was like, Oxford is this magical place where you go to the bookstore and John Grisham reads with you. <laughs> now we're in an empty room. I stare back at you with nothing left to say, swallowed words. But what could I expect? It's no surprise. Just look into my eyes, they say it all You know I don't have to utter one word You know it